I am today answering questions that have come into me over time and I want to address them when it comes to publishing deals. So find out what are some of your top questions coming up next on the Music Money Makeover Show. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham and today I am answering the top five questions or at least five questions that I've received in my inbox that I feel I should address about publishing and how it relates to you. So today it's not really based on, you know, uh, me teaching so much as more so you getting information from me. So consider today a freebie, all right? So I'm gonna jump into some questions and hopefully some of these relate to you. I know that I get these a lot and I have gotten them, so I'm gonna answer these questions as we dig into today's show. All right, so let me hop into the first question. All right, so I'm gonna read these. I got them written down, but uh, you know, I'm gonna read these out. Uh, and actually, I'll put them on the screen for you. All right, so I'm a producer and I've been selling beats online. I've sold more exclusives than leases. Should I sign a publishing deal at this point? All right, well, to, to answer that, my first answer would be no, right? Because um, if you're already selling stuff on your own, then you should be able to register for your own publishing on your own. And you all know that through this show, I show you how to do that. So you don't want to sign a publishing deal because it's not necessary. You're doing a lot of this work on your own. The only thing you need to do is register with all the right uh, accounts, the music reports, the Harry Fox, the BMI, the ASCAPs, all of that, the sound exchange, all this stuff. What I will say to that question as a producer is that I hope that if you're signing these deals or as you're signing these uh, or you're selling these beats, especially the exclusive ones, that it's not just a beat lease contract, but that it's a producer contract. That producer contract will have in it things like letter of directions, well, at least you want to put a letter of direction for your sound exchange. It will have things in there like your mechanical royalty percentage, all right, on physical sales. I mean, we know that the mechanical royalty will come in from uh, Spotify and Apple Music and all that and go to their respective places like Music Reports and Harry Fox, all right? But you don't actually need a publishing deal at this point because you're not doing a lot of heavy lifting besides selling beats one by one to people out in the general public. Like now, if you were working with a lot more like a uh, heavy, heavy hitting artist, I would probably suggest thinking about one. I wouldn't suggest signing one because the advance might not meet what you're already making in producer fees. So you might want to think about that one. All right, so hopefully that answers that question. Let me jump into the next one. I'm a songwriter starting out, and I've got offered a publishing deal through a production deal with a crew of writers. Should I sign this deal? Well, um, I'm going to say to that that it's probably going to be a depends situation, right? I don't favor the writing camps under contract. I, I don't mind like getting in the studio and everybody chips in on studio time and then you come together and you write records together. That's different. But for signing to a, a particular writing crew, production crew deal, you got to look at everybody else in it, right? How long are you going to be in it? What type of publishing is the key holder of the deal taking is this a mutual agreement between all the writers or is it you're just signing to another company to turn in records essentially signing a publishing deal or signing your publishing over to the company what is it i don't think if someone is to go and shop records for you right then you should probably consider something called a shopping deal all right so i wouldn't look for a publishing deal i would look for something that says like okay if you shop these songs right here then we will be able to you know break off a percentage of publishing for the the records that you only get placed not a blanket publishing deal on all of the records that i write while i'm underneath you and i'm saying that to say that if this is not a traditional publisher then you don't know their track record when it comes to exploiting the composition. 
And most people think that exploiting compositions means just getting uh, the songs to rec to artists that are signed to major record labels or record deals in and of itself. That's not the case because there's a lot more work that goes into actually having these publishing deals and actually having to um, really work the composition, okay? And do the administration for it and collect all the stuff for it, okay? So my answer to that, again, will be no, right? And maybe on a song-by-song -song basis. If and only if it gets placed, might I consider giving up some publishing for that because they did the exploitation work for me. But I would not sign a blanket deal in this situation uh, for all the records that I write underneath or in within this term and time period. All right. So let's jump into the next question. I placed a couple records on a major label artist. Should I sign? Huh. Okay. You placed a couple records on a major label artist. Should you sign to a publisher or or maybe even, I'm just going to take it a bit further in that question, maybe even the record label's publishing company, say a Warner Chapel or Sony ATV or a Universal Publishing Group, right? Should you sign a publishing deal if, if you place the record on an artist that's signed? I'm going to say... The only way that me personally, I would sign a publishing deal in that situation is if Universal requests to be the designated administrator for everybody on the record. What does that mean? Well, that means that if Universal is going to step in and say, hey, we'll do all the work, all the administration work for this one record so that nobody else has to do it, nobody else is separate, nobody's missing money, then I would possibly consider it the only other option to that is you know universal or the record label would be collecting your mechanical since they're so big they're going to collect and pay you your mechanical royalties all right and then as a producer or writer they're going to pay you the producer's royalty or whatever was allotted for the producer and the writer together those points they're going to pay that to you as well from the record label now on the publishing side if the record label collects all of the mechanical royalties for you, then there is nothing left, in my opinion, but just a performance royalty, all right? And then you have the digital sound recording royalty, but that's only if you requested a portion from the artist's share, all right? So, and that's gonna come from sound exchange. It might be beneficial to sign a deal with the major at that point because they're gonna do a lot of hardcore exploitation work for you. It might lead you into a bigger publishing deal if you do sign. It may give you connections with the major label, with the people in the business affairs department at that publishing house, all right? To say, hey, Casey, we got some opportunity for you. I see you, you know, and you've been communicating with us and you've been building a relationship. You might wanna leverage that signing to build relationships on the inside. It's all a depends situation. It's a, it's a fair space in this to say, yeah, sign the deal. But at the same time, you do have enough free reign to say, no, nah, I don't want to sign the deal. I'd rather keep all my performance money and my performance publishing money to myself. All right. That one's kind of, you know, you can or you can't. It doesn't really harm you. You will have to wait some time. You have to wait on the label. It's not going to be as fast as you think, but you will have to wait on the label to make sure you get those monies out. All right. Um, and so I hope that answered that question. All right. So let's jump into the next one. I've placed about 10 plus records on a major label artist. Should I sign? Um, so I'm going to say this. I'm going to say if you place about 10 records on a major label artist, maybe you've been working with this artist and they just got signed and all 10 of your records got picked up on the album, I would possibly consider the administration deal, right? Why? Because if you're a producer, you just got paid producer's fees. Let's say you got paid $5,000 a track for all 10 tracks. That's 50 grand. You should be good at this point, all right? That's like kind of a standard publishing deal, revenue amount, advance amount anyway. It's standard. I mean, I'm not saying that it's, that goes 
for everybody. I'm saying that's just the base level publishing deal advance amount, 50,000. Let's say you did 10 records and you got 5,000 a pop, right? Then that should you should that should be enough money for you. That's that's how I feel about it, all right? And then on top of that, I would possibly consider doing the admin deal for with them because you have so many records signed to this deal with this artist. It just makes sense because the label is going to collect. Like I said in the previous question, the label is going to collect those mechanicals anyway. So I would consider doing at least an admin deal with the in-house publisher at that label. All right. Um, but if not, you don't have to. But at this point, with so many records on, I would really consider the admin term. All right. Not the co-publishing, but the admin term. All right. Uh, let's keep going. Hey, man, I got a sync opportunity that is requesting publishing. Should I take it? Okay. So this is for all of my library artists out there, all of my instrumental artists out there, all of my studio rappers out there, bedroom rappers out there. Um, on the synchronization side of the game, a lot of people can sit in their homes and compose tunes for TV and film. All right. They may do it so much so that a publishing deal is offered or the sync contract that they get may say, hey, we want a piece of publishing. The only way, this is my opinion, that I would do this is only if the sync company purchased my album or purchased the rights to uh, the master recording for the library. Why do I say that? Because I want to make sure that you're going to fully exploit this. If this is going to be a library project, it's still a record deal. Okay. So we need all the advances, right? Or we need some type of advance. It's not going to be nowhere near what a major label would pay you. Even if it is, even if it is a major label, uh, clearance house, like a universal production music or EMI production music, or, you know, any one of those I would, highly uh, suggest that you consider it, see what the deal is, but I, I can't part with a single song in a situation like this. I just don't see it happening unless it was like earlier, like I said in the show, where you want to actually um, build relationships with the people at the company. Whereas if I do this first one, we're not going to do another another deal like this. You're not going to get this much publishing, okay? Because this is only for this company, for this time. I'm not going to do a co-pub deal with you. It has to be strictly administration, right? Because if you don't place anything with this record in, say, three years, I need to go look in, at another sink house to go get my records placed. So either, either you're going to give the term and do an admin deal, or I'm going to walk but I'm not going to do publishing on one song at a sync house unless I had another motive to build a rapport with these people and they for sure had a placement on the line for that record, right? That would be a sac It's what we call a sacrificial record. Sometimes in record label land, you got a sacrificial album. Hey man, it's just give it up, but get catching on the next go round. All right. Make sure you stay in pocket. Make sure you do your business right. All right. Last question. I'm thinking of signing to a library. Oh, okay. So here's another sync question. I'm thinking of signing to a library record label for an instrumental album. Uh, the advance is low, but they are taking ownership in the master and publishing. Should I sign? Um, it depends on how big that library is. That's uh, what I'm going to suggest. Right. You're dealing with the back side of the music industry, the side people are wanting to get into right now, but they don't quite understand it. All right. There are people who just sit in their rooms for those of you out there that don't know and create music and sell it to library record labels to be placed on television and film. All right. There are people who that's all they do. They don't care about working with any major label artists. They don't care about none of that. 
They only care about making music for television and film. And what I'll say to that question, right, is consider it. Consider it. That, I mean, that's, that's really all I can say today. Consider the fact that this might be pretty good for you. And if you're going to do something with like a, uh, um, not audio jungle, but like a APM music, uh, extreme music, um, uh, jingle punks, a crucial music, anything like that, I would consider because the placement rate is going to be high. Anyway, hey, you all, look, it, that's been the end of the show. Uh, got a new number. I want you all to text me, all right? Uh, 470-291-5767. 470-291-5767. Text me any questions you have. Um, I'll shoot you some free stuff underneath that number. You can find a free checklist as well down below, or you can just text me and I'll, I'll shoot it to you that way. That way we can stay in contact. You don't want to ask some of these questions on the bottom of the YouTube page. I get it. So now you can text the questions to me. It'll come directly to my phone down here. And then um, as you can see, I got the audio going right here on the thing. But you, it'll come directly right there. And then we can um, we can have a conversation, man. We can even hop on a call. Um, also, down below, you'll find a link to uh, the Musician's Guide to Self-Publishing, number one, or the Musician's Self-Publishing Guide, number one. I always get the titles mixed up when I don't have it in front of me. You can download that. That will show you how to exponentially build your publishing company and grow it exponentially. All right? Um, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Share, share, share. And I will see you all next time. Peace. <laughs>